This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. You can also learn about Farm Bureau Health Plans' 77-year history in the volunteer state. That's FBHP.com, Farm Bureau Health Plans. I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the OTP for the return of Amy Wells. Hi, Mike. Well, wait, <laughs> you're you're actually on the OTP. I'm actually on the OTP. It feels good to be back. Um it feels really good to be back. But you're not actually back because of of snow palooza or whatever we're calling this thing. Uh, you're still at the homestead. So you're back at work, but you're not back at work. I'm back. My my uh, my heart is back at work, but my physical body is still in my house. Um, yeah, this has some like shades of 2020 to it being <laughs> at the house doing the OTP. Um, having not seen you in a really long time face to face, it all feels like a dream that I've lived before. Um, but <laughs> it, it definitely it feels good to be back in the swing of things, even though we are all very snowed in here. We got a lot of snow at my house. I don't know. Did you get a lot of snow, Mikey? I want to say it would probably be 10 inches to a foot where I am. Oh, you got more than I did. Holy yeah. smokes. Yeah, but I mean, too much for the South, nonetheless. It's, it's a lot of snow. So um, once this clears up, I'm ready to physically be back in the office as well. But it it feels good to start thinking about Titans things and start to do some planning for the off season. It, it feels really good. All right. So let's back up and bring everybody up to speed on Amy Wells. They knew you were going to have a baby. We mentioned it many times, a second child in less than two years, yep. barely over a year and a half, right? <laughs> Not even a year and a half, okay. 17 months apart. <laughs> 17 months apart. Okay. So September, we're through three games when you go on maternity leave? Yeah, we were. Um, I was hoping that I'd make it through week four. Was that the Indianapolis game in week four? Week four was Cincinnati. Okay, Cincinnati, that's what it was. I was hoping that I would make it through week four. I really wanted to work another home game before I left. Um, baby girl had other plans, and she arrived a couple days before that game. And so I've been out ever since, and I have been just enjoying the Tennessee Titans as a fan, which has been a very strange out-of-body experience, but also very fun, um, and spending a ton of time doing mom stuff, just getting lots of baby snuggles and trying to keep two babies alive. And it's been chaotic. It's been hectic, but it's been awesome. So you so. have two children under two. I have two children under two. Um, it, it, it is not for the faint of heart. There's, there's a lot of moving parts all the time, but Livy, my oldest is loving being a big sister and is very helpful or as helpful as a toddler can be. Um, gentle isn't something that we have mastered yet. Have so mastered gentle. Yeah, no. So uh, if you can be helpful from a distance, that is ideal. Um, and Kylie just recognizes that she's going to get hit in the face sometimes. And that's just how the world <laughs> works. Um, but she, it, it's been great. The two get along very well but there's a lot of moving parts in my home right now. I hear at least one, if not two of them screaming. So there you go. Wow. Mm -hmm. But people asked us, <laughs> is she going to come back to work? Oh, and, yeah. and the answer was absolutely 100%. You are, you're coming back to work. You are, you are committed to, I, I guess I would say this lifestyle. Uh, it is, it is a lifestyle. Say, you know, I mean, you've made some choices here, but. But it's important to you and you like to work and, and people love what you do. So they're excited that you're coming back. I definitely like to work. That was something that was very important to me um, was finding a way to be able to do both because I uh, adore my children and I have really, really enjoyed this time home with them. It's been great to just kind of focus on doing the mom thing for a while 
and really just enjoy these moments when, uh, you know, having a newborn is just the best and they're little and they're tiny and they snuggle you and they smell so good and they're squishy and they're just great. Um, and my older daughter, Livy's at a really fun age where she's learning to do a lot of things really quickly. So it was really a gift to be able to be home and be around her a lot while she's learning five new words a day, it feels wow. like, and is becoming more independent. And so having this time to be able to watch this part of her young little life has been, I mean, just really special. It's been really fun to be a part of. However, not even however, that's, that's a complete thought. Also, I have really missed work. I have so missed being a part of the day-to-day -day with the Titans. I have missed being around, of course, all of my coworkers, being around you every day, bouncing ideas just off the walls and having this thought or that thought, talking about different things that are going on, hanging out with Ashley Farrell and Jack Mummert and everybody who... I get to just see back and forth the people in other departments being able to just uh, that camaraderie that you have being in an office all the time. I've so missed that. And then there's the football of it all. I miss going to practice. I miss getting ready for games. I miss the strategizing and trying to figure out what a certain game is going to look like. I miss covering it. I miss the interviews. I miss the stories. I've missed all of that stuff. So now I've got to figure out how to do them both at the same time. And it's going to be an adventure. <laughs> it's probably going to be more chaotic than anyone in my family prefers for a while. Um, but we're going to figure it out. And I'm excited about this chapter. Like, it's it's going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely crazy, but in the best possible way. And I'm so excited to bring these two lives together because there's something really special about when you're able to make them work and kind of feel fulfilled in both ways. That's, that's very exciting. You know, a lot happened in the four months you were gone. Yeah. Yeah. There's some stuff that went down, huh? Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a lot that went down. I mean, you essentially, the, the weekend that your second daughter was born, we got to two and two. Mm-hmm. And we said, oh, this is great. We're two and two. And didn't go so well after that. Uh, we went to London. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't go great. The trip was great. We had a wonderful time seeing Titans fans everywhere. And yet the the game, not so much. Yeah. Um, saw a preview of the what the Ravens team would become. And uh, not surprised that they have become really, really good. And I think they're going to be really, really hard to knock off, although Houston has a weird chance this weekend. Um, new quarterback. Um, maybe the end of the Derrick Henry era. New head coach on the way. Um, Mike Vrabel no longer the head coach. So, I, I mean, so much has changed that as when you finally do get over Snowmageddon and you're able to come into the building – you will, I mean, it's not like it was. No, and that's, it, it's a very strange thing because I've still been obviously tuning in. I've watched every game. I went to a couple as a fan. That was really fun. You mean, uh, you mean, listen, don't you? Yeah, duh. Well, of course, you said listen. watched. You said watched. Well, yeah. Mike, there's a chance that I might have turned on the television once or twice. There's well. nothing wrong with turning on the television. <laughs> I did. I was one of those people that turned it down and listened on the radio. Um, really so, hard to do, by the way. Complained about the delay. We're, you know, I'm thinking up as an art. I'm going to make it our off season mission. How to figure out, and it's different on different networks because of the delays. Well, and that's and with streaming and everything. Well, it and like. Tricky. In the stadium, if you're listening to 104.5 The Zone, you're getting it in time. But the people who would listen on the app were getting it 15, 20 seconds late. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, why are you why are you doing this so much later? It's like, no, it's just it has to go somewhere else to come out. And so we're just I'm going to make a point to figure that out for people, because if people are kind enough to try. 
let's do better. I don't understand the technology, but we have people who do, and we're going to figure that out. It really is an art form because obviously I've never tried to do that before. And every single week people talk about it. People talk about how they've been able to sync it up and they've figured everything out and they have a special algorithm and formula. I mean, Titans fans are much smarter than I am. And so I tried to do it. And honestly, Mike, for a while, I would just mute the TV, not really look at it unless I needed to see a replay <laughs> of something. And I'd rewind and I'd listen to you for the but most that's, part. But that's not right. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure there's a way to do there's it. There's a way to do you it. You and I might not be smart enough to figure We're it out. We're going to figure it out. You have my word. We're going to figure it out. Like I said, I, I know some people were listening on like the Titans app mm -hmm. and they were very upset by the delay. And th that's probably not going to be the way to do it in stadium. No. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that in stadium. Now, the if you're somewhere else. Going to the app is nice. Right. The function like my wife was out walking. I guess we were in Houston. She was out walking. And so she was listening to the game on the app. And when you're doing something outside, it doesn't matter if it's 20 seconds late. I mean, that doesn't. Mm -hmm. And, and if you're out of town or driving in the car or whatever, that's, I mean, that's not a bad thing, certainly. But if you're in stadium, if you're at Nissan Stadium, it's, I would understand why it's a pain. And we will do better, I promise. We will do better telling you the difference. Now, if people actually follow that, that will be the trick. Well, yeah. I mean, you can lead a horse to water, Mike. Well, but... I could see I could see you not following it and then come. Oh no, of course not. No <laughs> way. Um, did enjoy the in stadium experience overall as a Titans fan. I've seen it in such weird chunks. The way that you and I in, in, interact with a game is very different. When I'm on the sidelines, I don't have any of my senses. All I have are my eyes and you in my ears. Sorry. So I I don't hear. No, it's very nice. That wasn't a complaint. <laughs> So when I'm taking in a game, I have no idea what's happening in the stadium, in my periphery. Usually I don't even know if people are standing next to me because I'm very using my eyes to do this thing. Um, I, I So I've never really taken it all in, especially from a vantage point where I could see the whole field get out of town. I mean, it was it was fantastic. I ate chicken tenders and I watched the game and I just loved it. Did so, you watch no. what Ramon Foster was doing on the sidelines? Wow. Like a, like a hawk. Did you really? Or Ramon. Uh, anytime I'd turn on the TV, I'd be looking for him on the sidelines. When I went to a couple games, I was watching him. He'd go up and down. I'm sitting. <laughs> it took everything in me to not be texting him feverishly, <laughs> asking him questions, sending him different places. Nobody likes watching a game with me because I point at things that seem very obscure. <laughs> I'm like, why is that guy limping down there? Who is that? What happened to him? <laughs> like nobody nobody enjoys what I'm what I have to say or my commentary when I'm watching a game. But my family was very nice to watch it with me anyway. Did you go to like Duncan or the grocery store or somewhere? And somebody would come up and ask you how you thought the season was going or any all the time. All the time. All the time. Which was so nice. Um, because I, I I just I felt very included, which was so kind of people to do. Um <laughs> felt a little bad. I don't have any insight. The same place that they're getting their news, I'm getting my news. I'm reading Jim Wyatt's stories. So, I mean, Jim didn't tell me anything different than he told you. Um, I, I didn't have much to say. I mean, of course I have opinions and um, I'm happy, happy to chat, but I didn't know anything. I mean, I haven't been around. So, um, but it was great to just talk to people about the games. It was great to just talk to people about the team. Um, lots of places that I went that I ran into Titans fans and that was so fun. It was so great. It, it it's such a cool community, old Titans nation, you know, it really is fun. And even though I wasn't doing the same things that I usually would be doing, it was so nice to see people have them say hi, check in, ask about the baby, um, and then talk some Titans football, you know, that's the good stuff. I've got a couple of things that we wanted you to comment on. 
during the fall that you weren't available to comment on for four months. So you're going to have your chance after I mentioned our friends at Duncan again, grab a coffee and kick off the action, whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before watching the game at home. Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, we need to be at our best come game time, which is why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual, because it's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. So does this mom. Moms run on Duncan. Moms run on Duncan. Highly okay. caffeinated. All right. So um, what was your view? Everybody has expressed views on the whole Taylor Swift thing. And and I mean, you live north of Nashville. You're basically one of her neighbors. I mean, I am basically one of her neighbors. She went to Hendersonville High School right down the street. Yeah. OK, so what do you I mean, Tony Dungy, I think, says it's the end of the world as we know it. Um, <laughs> he says I it's don't... taking away from the game of football. Some people are just annoyed because uh -huh. they're football purists and they don't want to see her. And then the Swifties are, of course, elated. They want to see how she reacts, how she acts with Mrs. Kelsey, what she's wearing, which game she comes to. Many of them didn't understand that Kelsey couldn't uh, leave practice because practice is mandatory, according to these reporters, in order to join her at an award show. Um, it's been, if, if you kind of shoot it right down the middle, it's been really fun. Which is kind of where I am, because I like her. I think she's a nice person. I think she's immensely talented. I'm happy for all of her success. I, I'm happy she has a boyfriend. I mean, she's got a boyfriend. So good for her. That's what I say. Um, <laughs> it's not hurting anybody. And, and of course, the league is so smart. They're taking advantage of every part of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Let me put it to you this way. If an alien spaceship landed in the middle of an NFL stadium, they would hope it was the Giants and the Jets stadium to start with or in Los Angeles, but that's another story. But they would say, welcome aliens. Here are good seats. Uh, enjoy the game. We're going to put a camera. I mean, so, I mean, they're going to, they're going to promote whatever it is to promote the game. So with that as the backdrop, what did, or do you think? My, my I'm glad you're asking me this now and not, when it first became a thing because when it first became a thing quite frankly i thought it was an act i thought it was fraudulent i thought it was I, a setup i thought it was a setup i thought that the whole thing was just a little too convenient timing wise you know it's the middle of the season travis kelsey's in every commercial on television right now i mean he's promoting every product that exists so I thought that that was a little strange. He's a very hot commodity right now. And now he's dating the most popular person in the world, um, which is very convenient. But now, as time has gone on, and they are still together, and I mean, I, I think it's kind of nice. I mean, it seems like a lovely, delightful relationship, and I'm okay with lovely and delightful. Do I need you to give it to me every minute of every day for all times forever? Like, do I think that the morning news, and I mean, pick pick your news, it doesn't matter, should have like a daily Taylor Swift segment? No, no, I don't need that. I don't think that's important. Do I think that we should have like Taylor Cam during games? Not no, I don't really need that either. But you know you're going to get that. I know I'm going to get that. It's the yeah. NFL. They they're not dopey. They I no, mean they oh totally no can. no, and I think that's fine. And I think more from like a uh, from like just a casual like a a fan, just kind of an outsider looking in. That's nice. I'm glad you guys are together. It seems like a fun little Hollywood romance. You know it's the football players dating the popular girl. But from a business perspective, I think it is genius. I think that there are so many ways that they, being the NFL, they being Taylor Swift, they being Travis Kelsey, have just turned this into the most beautiful marketing business plan I have ever seen. It is just uh, delightful. They miss no opportunities to promote each other themselves like everybody's making money off of this relationship and i think it is excellent that i think is so good 
Well, like, even Kyle Juszczyk's wife, who made the the jersey coat. You, which was great. You I check, mean, yeah, he plays for San Francisco. His wife, she goes up like a hundred thousand followers or something mm-hmm. because she put together the jersey, which was actually kind of cool. I thought I thought it was cool. really cool. And the more he makes it, the more orders she gets, the more money goes into his bank account. Like this is genius. So many people are making money off of this relationship. It's a gold mine, and that I think is really great. Like that is what interests me. I mean, do I care if they're happy and living their best life together in Kansas City, Missouri, of all places? Uh, no. I mean, I, I hope they're happy. I hope that this is delightful for them. But they ain't going to live this, in Kansas City. Well, I, mean, I mean, because he may retire. His brother's retired. He may, that he man may, is not retiring this year. You stop it right now, Mike. Keith. He's 34 years old. He's pretty, 34 years old, still playing great and making so much money. He makes tw- That's the amazing thing is the fans who talk about, and, and I loved all the videos, and I don't know if they were real or not, where the women were talking to their husbands about who Travis Kelsey was <laughs> and that how they've come. To, and, and I think some of them were clearly setups. <laughs> or spoofs of what, but I do think it was happening in some real homes where some of the women were saying to their husbands, now this Travis Kelsey, I don't know if you know this, but he's a really good player. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, his salary this year was 12, five for a tight end. He's yeah. going to his ninth pro bowl. He's yeah. going to the hall of fame. He and his brother are both going to the hall of fame. I mean, he may give it up when his career is over. He ain't living in Kansas city, especially if he's with her. Oh, no, she no, that's, that's not his permanent home, although he does have a home in Kansas City. Well, sure, sure, and, and it's a good place. I'm not knocking it. But, well, I'm but like, and that's a weird thing, too. Like, I'm from Missouri. I have a lot of friends who live in Kansas State. My sister lives in Kansas City. I'm there a lot. It is, is very bizarre to me that Taylor Swift is running around Casey Mo. Like, that is odd to me. You think she shows up at, like, Jack Stack? Like, uh, you would think, I mean, girls got to eat. Where else are you going to go? I mean, uh, there's the part of this where she is a human. Yeah. And there's the part of this where she is a character. And my brain can't put the two together somehow to think that this person is in Kansas City dating a player, which, yes, is a celebrity and all of that. But, like. He's a tight end. He's a tight end. And, like, a guy that. I mean, I've covered a couple Pro Bowls. We've been to things like that. I've seen him around. He's been so just like, oh, yeah, there's there's a guy. But now he's dating T- Taylor Swift. And now he's like this elevated thing. Yeah. He's not just an NFL player anymore, which are celebrities in their own right, but like are just kind of also our coworkers to an extent, given the nature of our job. Travis Kelsey all of a sudden is like Brad Pitt. And that's weird. The whole thing is just a mind trip. And if I think about it too much, I go down this weird dark hole that I can't come out of. (laughs) Like, I just kind of spiral and start watching. All of a sudden, I'm watching cat videos, and I don't know how I got here, you know? okay. Yeah, I I can go pretty deep if I really think about it. Um, But the business of it, Mike, so many people are making money off of a singular relationship. Incredible. Incredible. I just I like her. I've always liked her since she was a teenager. I think I think she's phenomenally talented. There's some celebrities you just see them and you just think, you know what? I like this person. You just decide you. I just like them. I'm gonna. I mean, I don't have every album. You know, I I can name my favorite song. I can, but yeah. but it's not like I, I know them all. I, I certainly can't sing them all. Oh, you probably could if you had gone. You didn't go to to her show did no you? no my Ooh. daughter went my daughter my daughter's actually been to a taylor swift concert but never seen taylor swift she oh. went to the sunday night show that was right. delayed several hours by weather and she had to leave before the show started because the person she was at the show with had to be at work the next morning at like four thirty to open Oh no! So I, I've got to get her back to see to actually see Taylor Swift. Yeah, you got to get her. I mean, it's the most incredible concert I've ever seen in my whole life. Probably most incredible like show I've ever seen in my whole life. Like Broadway, anything. I mean, the whole thing was amazing. 
and just an athletic feat, really. And so, I mean, as a performer, I, I like her. I like her personality. I know I would say 98% of her songs. Um, I, I knew more than I knew I knew until I went to that show and was just singing for three hours. Oh, I know all of these words. Um, so, well, yeah, I'm I, definitely I hope, a fan of her. I hope she's happy. That's all I care about. She's yeah. got enough money. She's very famous. She'll be famous for the rest of her life. If I, I mean, if this works out, this guy, I mean, she deserves to be happy. That's all I care. I think. Something uh, I never thought I would talk about on the official Titans podcast. I hope everybody. But I knew we energy. would have to have this discussion with you at some point when you came back. It was quite hard having all of this unfold, having it be the biggest NFL story of the year, arguably. It and, is the biggest story of the year, whether we admit admitted or not. Yeah, and I'm sitting in my house with a, a two-week-old who cares none percent about my thoughts and feelings on the matter. Kylie doesn't care. She just doesn't. So I'm, I'm glad we could finally have to phone me in. You know, I, I thought about it a couple times, but every time I like had had the time and the baby was sleeping, it was the perfect storm. You guys were talking about something like really serious. And I hated to like call and be like, hey, I know you're talking about this really important thing. This is great conversation. Can we please segue to Taylor Swift? I didn't want to do that to you. Well, it's a big deal, too, because she's from here because she she mm -hmm. went to high school here and she still lives here. Yeah. When she's not well, a kid she's a or New York or California yeah. or, you know. You know, those places she hangs out. Yes. Um, SeatGeek is still the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. They were before you left. Mm -hmm. Still and they are. are. And they are now that you're back. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So... Titans fans can fan. You remember how to do it. Well done. I remember how to, I was afraid I'd forget. I don't All have right, the. So, so what questions do you have for me after four months? I know you probably have some football questions or other questions that you'd like to share. Go right ahead. What questions do you have for me as you return to the OTP and the OTP? Well, my key, to hear you. I mean, I, I just feel I should relay the questions of the people. Is that okay? Relay you whatever, whatever you wish. Well, a lot of people would like to know about the search for um, a new head coach. Right. I've been asked this question before. Um, what exactly does that process look like? What is the maybe a vague timeline? Do we know? So I would think the earliest the Titans could have a head coach would be late next week. And late next week would be... January 25, 26, 27. Yep, you're right. Okay. I think because of this, because where we are right now, if you are interviewing coaches who work for NFL teams, whether they are in the playoffs or not, you can only do it by Zoom. My wife, when, when I mentioned this rule to her, she goes, well, that's stupid. <laughs> and I said, well, I said, well, okay, you know, I mean, that's an opinion. I said, the, here's the reason that they've done it. The reason that they've done it this way is so that coaches who are still in the playoffs on winning teams who go to the final eight, go to the final four, go to the Super Bowl, don't completely get boxed out of their chance to be in the hiring process. If you if you just allowed people to interview, then like right now, if they can come in and interview, then I mean, let's say you're a guy like um, Brian Callahan from Cincinnati. Sounds like he's probably going to end up with a job somewhere, maybe even here. Who knows? But you bring in Brian Callahan to interview last week. You sit down with him. You go, oh, this is our guy. We think you do the rest of the interviews. And then you come to Sunday or Monday of this week and you say, let's hire him. Well, then a coach on the Baltimore staff or a coach on the San Francisco staff or on the Detroit staff or teams that are still in it, they don't have a chance. Right. So what you're doing is you're slowing down the process and you're also saying that the Rooney rule applies to in-person interviews as well. In-person interviews for NFL employees 
cannot start until after the divisional round, which is next Monday. And Zoom interviews don't count towards the Rooney rule because they want you to bring in candidates and give them a chance to impress you, just like what Mike Tomlin did with the Steelers, just like what Rand Carthon did with the Titans for the general manager's role. I mean, more than once, uh, by these guys getting this chance and getting to be in front of you, they have gotten their opportunity and they have won. Um, so you have to do these things in person. So if, if you're setting up the interviews next week, you've got a set number that you're that you're thinking of in your own mind because you've you've got to do some things and then you've got to go through the process. Theoretically, you could go ahead and try to make a hire at the end of next week, or you could go into the following week. Um, and things would open up more after the championship round because during the bye week, the coaches on the Super Bowl teams have the flexibility to do some interviewing themselves. So you don't have to. It could be the week of January 30th. Could could be that week or it could be late next week at the earliest. I mean, it could go it could go a couple more weeks theoretically. But those are how what I'm laying out for you, just how the rules are set up, which is how the timetable is going to be produced quite organically. Uh, because of how you have to fill those things. Titans have, I think, multiple more Zoom interviews that they're going to do before they figure out who goes to the next round. Well, and what we know for sure is that Amy Adams Strunk and the crew that she's put together, they're going to do their due diligence. They will leave no stone unturned. And they're going to make sure that they find the best guy for the job. So I think on one hand, you want to get this done. You want to get someone in place so they can start putting together their staff and they can start doing all of that. But on the other hand, you want to make sure you find the right pieces and you want to make sure that you've talked to the right person and that they're right fit in every possible way. So it, going by the rules is, is important. Of course, um, we got to get the right man for the job. The rules are good. Mm -hmm. I think the rules that force you to take your time a little bit to talk. Yeah. I mean, you could just sit here and say, okay, we're going to interview four guys by zoom. We're going to cut it to that at this point. And then we're going to bring them all in for in-person interviews. And you know, we're not going to waste everybody's time. And, and, and it's like, no, you have this time. Talk to everybody you can learn as much about, I mean, it's like the accelerator programs that they do and, and they're going to do one at the, uh, the meetings in May in Nashville here in, in at the NFL meetings in Nashville coming up. Um, those things are so good because the more people and, and it's good for the candidates, obviously, because they establish their own network. But it's good for you, too, to have a frame of reference because, hey, what if you're hiring somebody in two years? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, what what if you're going, OK, this didn't work. Or something happens and you have to make a big hire and you've met people and then you have a frame of reference, not just talking to this person's buddy or this this person. You know, you, you want to have your own frame of reference in order to make all of these decisions. The more, the better. The, the more knowledge of this, uh, the better. And I think you would be making a huge mistake if you didn't take advantage of, of this Zoom time. I mean, you really realistically should talk to close to double digit people during the zoom time. Yeah, why would you more? not? Why would you not? Lose. Right. Why would you not? I mean, all it is is time and you know, you can't go to the next round until after the divisional games this weekend. So why wouldn't you? Yeah. Expanding your network is important. I think. And I think Amy has done such a good job of that. And we saw that with Ray and Carthon and that hire, that was a product of having a wide net, taking advantage of every networking opportunity that she could to meet people, talk to people, see what's out there. And I mean, look what, look what came of it. So I think, plus it's just nice to have friends, you know, Mike. Well, and that's it. I mean, and, and so you can pick up the phone too at a certain point. And you could tell a fellow owner, hey, listen, we spent a bunch of time with this guy. Yeah. And he didn't fit us at the moment, but man, is he good. 
-hmm. you know, that you can sort of serve as a reference for somebody to get that opportunity and to get that next step. Uh, as you sort of create that next generation of leadership, you know, so many of these guys who are interviewing for jobs right now are in their mid to late thirties. You know, they've just gotten to the point that they've arrived in early forties as well. Uh, they've just gotten to this point and, you know, some of the older coaches have now moved on. And so this becomes their time and their opportunity. And, you know, it's exciting. You've, you've seen a lot of positives come out of these rules and the league saying, okay, let's try to give everybody an equal shot when they get into these circumstances, not only the teams, but also the candidates. And, and that's why I think the rule about slowing it down, even though my wife said that's stupid, um, but you know, they could slow it down even more. They could say that you couldn't do in-person interviews until the week off between the championship games and the Super Bowl. You know, and that would make it even more. And and that may be something that they do in the future. I, You know, every league mandate is not my favorite. Uh, but this this thing, I think, is a, is a really, really good thing because in seeing the Titans hire coaches over the years um, and hire general managers, they, they have gotten more exacting in what they've been able to do, largely because of the rules. You mentioned the next generation of coaches. I would like to talk about the next generation of quarterbacks because it seems that there's something a brewing with the Tennessee Titans. Tell me about Will Levis. What did I miss? I think what you missed is you missed a guy that showed all of the traits to potentially be the guy. And that's the most important thing right now in the discussion with Will Levis is – you have seen enough from him, in my opinion, that you move on to 2024 feeling like he's going to be your starter and giving him the right to have the keys to the car and let's see what he's able to do going forward. That does not mean he's the quarterback of the future forever. That does not mean that he is automatically a franchise quarterback. It doesn't mean that. And – there are there are those in the discussion who feel like when you say something positively about Will Levis, that you're saying, oh, he's definitely it. And that if you're not positive enough about it, then if you're just couching that saying he did well, we're excited to see more of him, then all of a sudden, well, what you're not telling us is you don't think he's it. It's like, no, it's neither. It is neither. It is as the Titans make their plan for 2024 and beyond, he gets the next shot. And you feel good about him. I, I think he has a real chance to be that guy. Now, what's his offseason like? Does he, does he have an offseason like Vince Young did after he was Rookie of the Year and come back his second year and not play as well? Or does he improve? You know, what, what does it look like? Can he expand his game? Can he take coaching? How will he be as the offseason leader? How will he be with an offseason of it being his time, really for the first time in his entire life? Having a couple of bucks in your pocket and you're not married to a school calendar or to a workout calendar all the time. Those are the things that, that you have to see. But did he prove that he is worthy of giving him the next step. Yes, he did. Do I like the way he played? Yes, I did. He played quarterback. He didn't just run plays. He, he played quarterback. I like what I saw. But if anything in this thing for a while has taught me, it's that you, you don't know until you see the development. You don't know until you see the adjustment. You don't know until you see the progress. So, do I think the Titans are drafting a quarterback high in 2024? I don't. I don't. And because they have the shot to know that, Amy, if this works out of Will Levis as the second-round pick and he does become the franchise quarterback, then you've hit a goal mine. You, you've hit an absolute goal mine. And he has given you enough faith to take that shot. 
And then if year two doesn't work out, if there's a regression or there's a problem or whatever, then you have the the right and the money to go on and, and do something different. But for now, I think that's what you're doing. Is I mean, that in golf terms would be hitting the three iron down the middle in terms of a comet instead of pulling out drive. Uh, but everybody wants to pull out drive. Everybody wants to make it one thing or the other. And it's not. And if you're the Titans, it absolutely shouldn't be. Long answer, so. No, that was a great answer. I feel very caught up. I want to talk a little bit, if you've got the time. I have. T- yes, I do. That's so good. Um, About the roster in 2024. It's going to look a lot different than it did in 2023, right? Eh, I mean, Maybe not. Yeah, I mean, the roster looked a lot different in 2023. It sure did. I mean, it, it turned over about half. Yeah. Um. I don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think there's, we've always said that the average turnover for a roster is 13 to 17. When you change coaches or general managers, and so that's roughly a a, a third of the, a quarter of the roster to about a third of the roster turns over. That's just a normal year. When you change coaches or GMs, that goes up over 40%. I, I think it's probably going to be 40%. I think it'll be 20-ish roster spots because I think a lot of guys will come back in their same sort of roles but with a chance to do more Mm -hmm. or they will come back in like I I think some of the offensive linemen will come back in different roles maybe not as a starter maybe they're a starter maybe they're not but they showed that they can play and they can help you and so you want them to be part of your team that's a change in the starting lineup but that's not a change in the roster. I yeah, do, okay. I do think the starting lineup will change considerably. Yes, I don't know that the roster will feature as high a percentage of change because I think they found some guys who can play. Mm-hmm. And you need, you know, it's often been said the roster is really divided into thirteen or into three parts: one through twelve, your very best players, regardless of position. 13 through 40, guys who are active on Sunday and making things happen, some pushing to be in the 1 through 12, some improving to become a starter, and some just sort of maybe on the back end of a starting career, now they're backups. And then 41 through 53, which is the guys who cover kicks, your specialists, all of those sorts of people that kind of factor in. What you want to do is you want to be as good in all three areas as you can be. You want the best one through 12 you can possibly have. You want the most solid 13 through 40 you can possibly have with guys busting at the seams, trying to push their way forward. And then you want the most active, talented, uh, athletic 41 through 53 you can find. I think in all three areas, Rand Carthon, Chad Brinker, and Anthony Robinson – the guys who run personnel, I think they are looking to improve in all areas and that, you know, you are going to see some guys in that one through 12 who turn over, which means roster changes. You're going to see some guys who push forward, who bring some, some roster changes, but also some lineup changes as well. Probably more lineup changes. And the Titans have a lot of cap room this year, a lot to work with. Ton of cap room, a ton of freedom, they have the ability to go do what they need to do in a variety of areas. Trades are certainly a possibility. They have eight draft picks. They don't have a third round pick. They'd love to have a third round pick back. I don't know where or how they get that. Uh, you know, that could be dropping down in one of the first two rounds. Uh, if if they get to number seven and they have a pool of four or five players that they would like to have, they might be willing to drop back to 10 in exchange for somebody's three, you know, somebody's desperate to get one of the quarterbacks Titans again in the philosophy, you don't feel like they're going to take a quarterback at seven. So maybe you're open for business to drop back and then you end up with your tackle that you want, or you end up with your wide receiver that you want, or you end up with your corner that you want. I mean, from a Titans perspective, you should probably hope six quarterbacks go in the top 10. I don't think that's happening, but 
that would be that would be what your hope would be because that makes number seven more valuable. And remember, what you got in the third round last year was Tajay Spears. So, yeah. so nobody can convince me that a three is not important because he is, to me, he's one of your top 12. And he was a third round pick last year. Yeah. Mike? Did we do it all? Did we get it all? Any, I mean, any, this any is pretty good. These are my biggest ones. And, well, we've got a lot to do. Uh, Going to hire a coach. Yeah. Excited about that. Uh, we think we're going to the Senior Bowl. That's the plan. Kind of matters when we hire the coach. Um, we love Senior Bowl. Mac and Red are ready to go to the Senior Bowl now. Of course. I Bust think, out your matching sweatshirts, boys. I, we're going I, to Mobile. I hope they don't wear the matching sweatshirts. Oh, they will. It's <laughs> Step Brothers. It was We've got to pull out that picture again. It was so great. For the OT people. Yeah, they had no idea how many hits that would get, that picture of them. <laughs> Step brothers picture, as we call it. I love it. But uh, yeah, I mean, hmm. last week was a tough week for Titans fans, mm -hmm. and I get it. And it it got better, got a little better every day. And now you're to the point where you're turning the page and you're saying, "Who's the coach going to be?" And I, I would say this about the coach search. Remember, you're hiring a head coach. You're not hiring somebody who ran an offense or a defense. I wouldn't spend a lot of time judging what their team did in the first round of the playoffs based on what kind of head coach they're going to be. And the the overriding fit of a head coach is about a lot more than just being a football coach. I've been around a lot of head football coaches that it has driven them crazy how little football they actually get to coach. Because they are so busy, you know, making sure the coordinators have everything straight, working with the general manager on personnel, doing the things in the building that they have to do administratively, doing PR things. Uh, they, all first-time head coaches, would love to be coaching more football. That's what they'll end up telling you. Uh, in the end, they learn the the good ones learn the balance. And they learn to say no to certain things, and then they find the balance. But they would still tell you they don't coach as much football as they did back when they were coordinators. Because they're, the other things that are required, you got to talk to the owner. You've got to talk to fan groups. You've got to, you know, do the media four times a week. I mean, all those things that are requirements of the job. So being an administrator and an organizer is a big part of it being somebody who can be a communicator with everybody in their world and outside of it is part of it, being a front guy. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some people in life, men or women, who are just front people, you know, like Taylor Swift. You know, Taylor Swift yeah. doesn't need, the band is important, but it's she's front person. Um, a really good head coach is a good front person. So as you evaluate the candidates, I would encourage the OT people to look at it from a much bigger, wider view, 30,000 feet for sure, because that role and, and look at the number of people who have been head coaches before and the NFL is full of guys, Bill Belichick, Marv Levy, on and on and on, who were better the second time around. Uh, so as you hear, you know, so these things are out there. And I think you always want to keep those things in mind as you're looking for the head coach, not how many yards they gained or how many yards they gave up. Um, you know, they wouldn't be in their roles if they weren't pretty good overall. They didn't just, you know, everybody has games where your players are not at their best or you're not at your best, whatever. So I'm not meaning to give a lecture. I just, I just think it's a bigger discussion and, and having seen it for years here, when we have focused on one thing, we have not picked head coaches that were as good. Yeah, I think perspective is important, especially in that role, because you see such a small amount of the whole of what that role requires. Right. So well, don't think, think folks. And, and the other thing, too, is, I mean, and Rand Carthon said, well, we're not hiring the next head coach with just Will Levis in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's really smart. Yeah. Because even if you hire one of these guys who has a background on defense, 
plenty of these guys can go out and hire a great offensive coordinator, great quarterback coach, and you can be absolutely just fine. I mean, yep. certainly nobody was complaining about the offense here from 2019 through 2021. Nope. And, yep. you know, when you've got your quarterback rolling, you got your running back rolling, you're spending a bunch of money on your offensive line and A.J. Brown showing out and, you know, you have all these things that are happening, um, you know, it all works out. The, the biggest thing is pick the right person who fits the framework that Amy Adams Strunk wants and then go get better players. That's to me, that's what it comes down to, Amy. I, I think that was the year. If, if you asked me if you had not seen or heard uh any of the 2023 Titan season, my description of it to you in a sentence would be our talent wasn't good enough. Yeah, I think that's fair. Well, that's what I whenever you lose the game by a play or two plays. Generally, the underlying thing isn't a call by the official or a game plan, a game plan or a play call or whatever. I mean, there are certainly all things we would do differently in anything we failed in. But most of the time, it's the other team was better. Yeah. And for several years, we were better. Six yeah. straight winning seasons seemed to win virtually every close game. But, you know. Our first 12, pretty good. Our top 12 was pretty good. Our our 13 through 40 was pretty good. Our 41 through 53 had, you know, guys who were coming on all the time. This year, just not enough in e any of the three areas. To me, that's what it came down to. And now we've reached the time of the year where we can go and address some of those things. Well, it's like the commercial they ran after the Super Bowl that Steve McNair starred in 20 years ago, the minute after a Super Bowl ends, they cut to Steve McNair in a white bathrobe sitting out by a pool and he starts singing tomorrow. And then they have all the, they cut to all these other people singing tomorrow because the bottom line was now that the Super Bowl was over tomorrow starts the next year. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're almost to tomorrow. We're yeah. almost to the point. I mean, you know, Houston won three games last year, and they're playing in the divisional round. They won the division, and they were bad too. I mean, there was there was a real thought they might have just won one game. Um, there there are teams that go from being down to being right in the middle of it in a hurry. The Rams did when we played them. They won four games the year before we played them in Super Bowl thirty four the next year. I mean, that's the beauty of this league. Uh, we've just got to keep pushing for tomorrow. I can't wait. I can't well, wait. Well, you'll have to. No, I and, and I think to. actually tomorrow. You can leave <laughs> your back, house. Like, yeah, you can. I'm leaving my house tomorrow. I hope. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But we've got a lot of good stuff coming up. Well, we do. And, and most of all, and I want to say this honestly, the best thing is you're coming back, and we're glad we've missed um, you. Uh, it feels good to be coming back. I've missed you all very much. I've missed doing this. Um, I miss the OTP, man. Of all the things we do, I love this podcast and I love the OT people. And it it feels so good to be back. I can't. Uh, there are not words to describe how good it feels to be back. And I'm re I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready. Well, fortunately, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. As the OT people can can tell you, there's a lot to do for the Tennessee Titans in this offseason. There's going to be a lot of good stories. There's going to be a lot of news. Got to be a lot of fun discussion. And let's go, man. I mean, it, it's time. Let's just go. The countdown to Indy begins, Mike Key. We're going we to the Combine in weeks. Yep. Senior Bowl first. In your bowl first. For the returning Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for the OTP. Sign up.